All right, here we are. It is October 18th, and we have successfully grown in our Arden 15. I know it's a quick transition. Fall is here, winter's coming, and we got to get our winter grass down, cool season grass. But I'm not doing rye grass, and I'm not doing Kentucky bluegrass, and I'm definitely not doing tall fescue just because it's tall. Right now, we've got to get this stuff scout down low. That way, this Bermuda doesn't keep competing with the grass that's going to be growing in. we got to get this scout down, and we need to get it scarified. That way, we can scratch up the surface of the dirt in between the Bermuda and try to make a good seed bed for this seed that we're going to be putting out. So let's get our outlet and get it knocked down really low. And... Uh, Let's get this stuff scout. That's pretty dang low. That's the lowest I've had it so far. As you see, we finished scalping it last night. So, now we need to scarify it. All right, so one reason we're gonna be scarifying is to get up any debris that may be covering our dirt. The second reason I'm doing it is to kind of scar up the dirt, loosen up the surface of the soil a little bit, break a little bit of that surface tension so that our seed will have a good bed to germinate in. So let's get this changed out and get to scarifying. Do that with your Toro. We got all the trash raked out and uh, the old ground scarified. And look at him. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like after you scarify. And I had the setting all the way on S. So. All right, now it is time to lift the cat out of the bag or the seed. I am gonna be overseeding my Bermuda with pin cross creeping bent grass. Now this is a uh, cool season grass predominantly used on golf greens and fairways but I wanted to do something different. Everybody's overseeding their stuff with perennial rye or 
Kentucky bluegrass or fescue or whatever they're doing. And I did ride last season, but I wanted to do something different. I talked to a couple of people and they, they said, oh, I wouldn't suggest doing that. That just made me want to do it more. So we got 15 pounds here. Uh, this bent grass is supposed to be put out at one to two pounds per thousand square foot. I've got 7,000 square foot. So if I was gonna go two pounds, that'd be 14 pounds. So we're right there at the top. You know me, I always like to go a little extra. And this here is our Stay Green Starter Fertilizer. This is what they had at Lowe's and this is what I picked up. It's a 18 24 6. That phosphorus is really gonna help us get some good, quick germination. My temperatures right now are in the mid to upper 80s during the day and about 65, sometimes 70 at night. And my soil temperatures are around about 72, 73 degrees here in South Mississippi. Uh, creeping bent grass requires soil temperatures between 59 and 82 degrees, not 60 and 83. It has to be between 59 and 82. So let's get this seed loaded in our spreader and I'm gonna go on a very, very low setting to start off with because this seed is as small as sawdust, maybe even smaller. And I'll show you a close up here in just a minute. So we're gonna go really, really low on our setting. And we've only got 15 pounds of it, so we've got to spread this stuff out. So I'm gonna go on like a one or a two setting and see what that looks like. But I'm gonna put it out two different directions. I'm gonna go north and south and east and west to make sure that we have good coverage and I don't make any lines of grass seed in my yard. I want it nice and even when it comes in. The fertilizer, I'm just gonna do one way, probably one direction. It's not as tedious as a deal as the seed, so. And I've also got some edges like around my flower bed and stuff that I'll be doing by hand because I don't want this stuff to go into the flower beds and start growing in there, so. I'll do that by hand first, and then we'll start hitting the field. Okay, so we ran into a little bit of a problem with the grass seed. That stuff is so fine that on the lowest setting for my spreader, the rate that it pours out is way too fast for me to be able to cover this area. So I had to put it on the lowest setting and then run with it. So I got my sprints in for the day. Now let's put out this fertilizer. Now, everything is out. We have scalped, scarified, there's my wife,
spread the seed, spread the fertilizer. Now, the most important part. You gotta water it. You have to water it. I cannot stress enough how important it is to water this seed and keep it wet. Everybody all over the internet, forums, comments on videos, comments on my videos, the videos I tell people that this is the most important part of, this is the most important part. You have to water it and keep it moist. I don't care if you don't like the word, it has to stay wet. So, the best way to keep it wet is to set it on a timer. If you can't sit there and watch it, put it on a timer. 7, 11, 3, and 7. Four times a day. And watch it. Watch your heat and see and make sure that it's staying wet. You got to keep it wet. So let's put out our sprinklers and we'll get it set up and make sure we have 100% coverage with water. We don't want any dry spots. We want complete coverage. Here we are, finally finished. Now a lot of you are thinking, why bent grass? A lot of people up north hate it when bent grass gets in their yard. A lot of people up north hate it when Bermuda gets in their yard. Well, the only person that I know of, you may know somebody, or know a channel that has done a fall overseeding with bent grass, the only one that I know of is Lawn Tips, and he only overseeded his green with bent grass. See, the thing is with me is everybody overseeds their yard with perennial rye or annual rye for fall or winter. I wanted to do something different. This is a winter grass, low growing. Well, you can cut it low, and it's a winter grass or cool season grass, whatever you want to call it, that will actually creep. So, why not? I mean, if it fails, it fails. It's just grass, and they got glyphosate by the gallon at the store. But boy, let me tell you, if it's not a fail, this is going to be beautiful. It's going to be a 7,000 square foot golf green. I've never even seen bent grass, not in person. I've seen pictures of it, videos of it. I've obviously done some research about it because I put it in my yard. So I'm pretty excited because I want to do some sand leveling in my yard. And this bent grass, it loves being leveled with sand. It'll creep through it. And this stuff spreads. And the winters down here in South Mississippi, it's really like fall all year long. You get a couple of frost here and there, but other than that, it's like having fall all year long. So your your days are in the 70s, and your nights are in the 40s, maybe, sometimes 30s. So I think we're going to keep enough warmth in the ground and enough sunlight to be able to really make this bent grass spread and grow. And next season, when the Bermuda starts coming back in, if they play well together, I may leave it and just see what it does. So if you want to see how this project turns out, and you want to get updates on this, click that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you get updates every time I put out a video. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Comments down below, suggestions down below, any coaching tips on bent grass, throw them my way. I appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch y'all in the next one. You can see here, that's a pellet of fertilizer. And that's a seed.
So this stuff is little bitty. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at blues. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow.